Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Reality Is. My name is Alicia. And my name is Sanjana. Um, and before the show starts, we'd like to let viewers know that the values that are expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the values of Close Look Productions. They are our values and ours alone. Um, and Sanjana, we have a sponsor. Yes, we do. Thank you to Siri Honda. Please do check them out at SiriHonda.com and you can find them on 152nd Street and Fraser Highway. Awesome. Okay, well, let's get started <laughs> with the show. Um, we have a new layout. Uh, this is so interesting and kind of mm. weird and awkward. Um, but you know what? The show has to go on even if there is a pandemic in place. It still has to happen. We still need to provide viewers with shows so that we keep learning, we keep growing, we keep learning about different things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be something to get used to. Um, but I really think that with our, I guess, our goal or our aim in mind, we're still able to do what we would normally do if it was in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Because I feel like it's so important that we're still, as you said, like growing and acknowledging all this new information and mm -hmm. all these misconceptions that still need to be debunked. And yeah, switching to Zoom is a, a good idea because we're obviously respecting, you know, um, mm -hmm. the safety standards that are there and implemented. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, we still have guests coming. We're going to still have our games. But for this week, we're going to keep it pretty simple. Um, this is going to be kind of like our, um, you know, getting used to being on Zoom. And it will just be a more basic show for just for this week. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a little bit about our topic. Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So today we're talking about collectivism and individualism. And this is actually mm. a topic I was not very familiar with um, when I was brought up, but it seems like something really worth talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so um, we... I mean, it's just a topic that just came up, I guess, in our conversation. And I, I, I brought it up because I, I know quite a bit about it. And I know that it's something that if we in a multicultural society, if we, you know, if that's if we say that we live in this kind of country where there's so much diversity and different cultures, we really need to like appreciate and, and, and understand it in a proper way. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's why we're talking about individualism versus collectivism and how they're different and how there is a need to understand it and to really like learn how to also bring it together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, I think the balancing act is so important. And yeah, with that being said, um, collectivism, I, I think it's like, it's something that's about, I guess, identifying with like a group and the values that are there in that society, in that, um, in that group, in that family. And it's really focused more on, I think, um, that orientation with that group um, and recognizing the values in that group. And a lot of times, I think people who are, have that um, collectivistic uh, mindset um, might be more sacrificing of um, their individuality, maybe at times, mm -hmm. um, and this trying to um, really fit into that collective mindset, I feel. Yeah, so that, that was a really, for someone who says that you don't know much about it, like, I feel like that was a pretty good, yeah, yeah oh my God. grateful answer. But so like, I'll give a quick definition. Yeah. Um, so collectivism is like a life philosophy. Um, where like our cycle social so like our psyche and our social experience um, it comes from our, our identity from our family a group or society mm -hmm. um, and like you said it really focuses on group goals um, what's best for the collective group as well as personal relationships so oh. it's like in collectivistic cultures your idea of yourself, your relationship to others, it's so different compared to an individualistic approach. So you mm -hmm. have more importance placed on like what other people might think about you, um, social hierarchies, 
Mm -hmm. um, how you present yourself, how you perceive, how you're perceived from other people. So those things become a very, very important thing that you keep in mind um, mm -hmm. when you experience the world. Um, yeah. Yeah. And let's talk about individualism. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I think like individualism is really focused on, well, like the opposite of collectivism, I would mm -hmm. say, like mm -hmm. really focusing on, I guess, how um, complex or how unique each person is um, mm -hmm. and really focusing more on that instead of how they fit into a group, um, mo more focused on what makes them unique instead of how they've been molded by their society or their group is what I'm thinking. Yeah, exactly. So it's your individual level of, of identity that no two people are alike because mm -hmm. we're all unique. We're all unique snowflakes. We have our <laughs> own personal qualities, our own experiences, and they can't be the same as um, other people. Mm -hmm. uh, do you notice how both like mindsets are not wrong? Like, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, because for a second I was like, oh, man, they're both like you know great like i was like oh well maybe like collectivism is actually more in the wrong or maybe that's a poorer mindset to have um but now i'm kind of looking at both um ideas and concepts mm -hmm. and i'm thinking that there's value in each yeah and you know what like if uh, like i said at the beginning like if we we're talking about multiculturalism mm -hmm. a huge part of multiculturalism and a huge part of understanding culture is where is that other person coming from? Why are they thinking that way? Or why are they doing what they're doing? Well, mm -hmm. it's often based upon like what your idea of a lot of things are. It's based on your ideas of family, your ideas of um, independence, um, your ideas on the importance of other people, extended mm -hmm. family. And that comes from your, basically, if you're individualistic or if you're a, if you're, if you're a collectivist. Um, so yeah, it's really important to know because then you kind of actually understand the person way more and they could yeah. understand you as well. Yeah, um, definitely. Cause yeah. their perceptions obviously dictate the way that they act and the way that they approach different mm -hmm. situations in their life. And it really goes back to, I think like that culture episode that we were doing as well yeah. and really understanding yeah. the layers behind, um, yeah. that a person is thinking about. Yeah, that's really like if if our, you know our viewers remember like we had the iceberg and mm -hmm. like at the top was like food, dress, language and at the bottom is like more deeper topics that really like talk about this culture like in a very like uh, really understanding where they're coming from and one of them would be their world view. Mm -hmm. Um so I wanted to ask you like okay, so there's like certain things that people say and it really reflects if you're collectivist or if you're individualistic. So <laughs> one of them would be like, it took a village to raise me. Mm -hmm. That sounds really um, collectivist. Yeah. Collectivistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then the other one would be the American dream. So, you know, it's kind of like this, like this general idea that if you work really, really, really hard, mm -hmm. that you can, you know, you're in control of your success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's more individualistic, I would say, or I guess, I don't know if this, would, um, this makes sense, but maybe even a form of universalism in that sense that it's like solely like the American dream instead of maybe acknowledging like more of like you know various people's dreams from like different culture groups yeah yeah um i think that like for that one it's like you so of course with individualism like you have the power to change your situation it's all based on you and your mm -hmm. needs and you know you want something so you go and get it and then what collectivism is like, you have a goal or you have a desire, you really need to think about the other factors in your life, most likely your family, your society, your cultural beliefs, before you can just go ahead and like, do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what, like, there's so much connected connection building going on in this show. Like, do you remember when we did the good girl syndrome and how, yeah. like, how difficult it is for for women, I think, who come from, let's say, collectivistic cultures, who mm -hmm. are trying to navigate an individualistic society. 
That's why there's yeah. like, that's why there's so much stress and um, maybe some unhappiness um, when it comes to like the good girl syndrome. Yeah, for sure. Cause it seems like there's such a callous collectivistic attitude as you were saying in terms of I guess just conforming to what you think society expects from you um instead of solely acting on like what you as an individual would do or Mm -hmm. as an individual what you perceive to be the right thing to do um yeah I definitely agree with that so Sanjana what are some examples of each worldview I know you came up with a couple so I'd love to hear them Yeah, so um, for um, individualistic, it's really focusing on being, um, I would say, less dependent on people Mm -hmm, um, and more focused on, I guess, finding like what things you're able to do with the resources that you have. Yeah, um, yeah. really being self-reliant because maybe it's um, being reliant on other people can be associated with shame or embarrassment at times. Yeah. So that would be like the classic, um, you gotta, you're leaving home at age 18 to make it in your life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, definitely, definitely like um, thinking about more like how, how can I um, be an individual and kind of associate more with, who I am as a person and I guess less on what is expected of me. Yeah. And the importance of just being independent. Like it's like, that's expected that you are, you know, you're an adult now. So Mm -hmm. it's time to assert yourself as a, as an adult, as an individual, not as um, Mm -hmm. someone who is dependent upon their parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're no longer like an extension of your family. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And then also really focusing on being, stand like standing out and being more authentic to yourself being more unique as well Mm -hmm. um and a lot of times the rights of individuals also kind of take um higher precedence as well in this mindset yeah no totally these are some good examples um i know for collectivistic uh examples it would Mm -hmm. just be more in terms of like thinking about what others think of you Mm -hmm. because it reflects um it kind of reflects uh it reflects upon the bigger societal like hierarchy so it's like it's like not based upon individual wants and needs but it's based upon collective values and beliefs and how well you abide by that Mm -hmm. and so I think I think if you don't abide by it then you're labeled as something that you don't want to be labeled as because it's so important in that culture yeah exactly because you're it's not just representing yourself it's representing um your family or um that culture group that you're associated with so there's obviously tremendous pressure with that exactly and 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 the other really really um like I guess one of the key differences is like individualism is independence and collectivism is interdependence so it's okay to rely on other people your family maybe some other community members to do things it's not seen as shameful it's actually seen as a strength to rely on these people Mm -hmm. and perhaps being too independent would be frowned upon so it's Mm -hmm. really interesting how like the um the way something is seen like something so simple as independence is seen completely different polar opposites um but you know what Sanjana like I I feel like um for for people who like let's say come from collectivistic backgrounds like their parents Mm -hmm. do and then you're Mm -hmm. living in an individualistic um society now yeah there's always that tug tug and war tug and war tug of war (laughs) (laughs) something like that (laughs) yeah it's tug of war it's like which one both are good in their own ways um because we've kind of had like the um I, we've had the experience of both worlds um so i feel like we both are like yeah like both have their own advantages and and as a result it's really hard to kind of pinpoint like when you're asserting yourself and when let's say um the collectivistic parts of um of like a value or a belief is like seeping into your problem solving and decision making so I don't know it's always it's it's like that for me all the time yeah 100% because 
there's just so many different values that you have to consider like mm-hmm. um I think like being from like a South Asian background and then having to conform to more of an individualistic mindset is definitely a change. Um, And it's obviously, I guess sometimes maybe difficult for maybe my family to comprehend that sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And, and also if let's say, sorry, I totally cut you off, but like, it's not good. (laughs) It's just like, uh, and then it's the other way as well. If you're Mm -hmm. talking to your friends about something, maybe a decision you made, and it was coming from a collectivistic lens, they may be questioning your decision-making skills or, you know, like that kind of thing. So, uh, Sanjana, how do we find a balance between the two worlds? I feel like we're constantly trying to maneuver in. Mm -hmm. I think, I think first, like understanding, like, where we get like certain values from or um, certain perceptions of things. Like, I think recognizing um why it is that you think about um a particular topic in a certain way and find out if that's maybe coming from um like the culture that you're in the family that you're in um the friend group that you're in um and just understand where that's even coming from in the first place yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's true (laughs) oh yeah and then i would say like probably understanding like whether this is something that you want to associate yourself with or is it something you want to disassociate yourself from um as well that's true so it's first it's like first it's i guess seeing or identifying if it's a collectivistic thinking that you're presenting to this issue or if it's individualistic like really getting in touch with that because sometimes we just don't we just don't take that time to reflect on that because mm-hmm. sometimes people don't even know that this is a factor that's playing a um, an influence in their in their decision making and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, I was gonna say like also think about what kind of person you want to be in that situation or in the decision you want to make. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel that you really want to think about your family in that situation? then you should be thinking collectivistically. Um, if you feel like your mentality in that particular situation is very, um, like really acknowledging your personal feelings or your personal wishes, um, then you would be more likely to adopt the individualistic mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, and also it's okay uh, to go back and forth. If there's out of these two there's nothing that is inherently better or worse yeah Um, so it's okay to kind of flop back between two ideals um because i think that if you're an individual individualistic society then of course the collectivistic thing thinking might be seen as kind of backwards or um, not the right way to like go about a situation Mm -hmm. so don't let that deter you from making the decision that's coming from your heart Wow. <laughs> oh my god so deep I, like I need to quote you on that oh god, stop <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah. that that makes perfect sense I think really reflecting what what is true to you and even though it might seem a little daunting um I guess as we were talking like it doesn't seem like either option is a bad option um so it's 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 just really about what makes most sense for you so i think that the reality of this situation is that it's okay to conform to either an individualistic mindset or a collective mindset either way is okay and i think reflecting on this constantly is really important so that you can associate yourself with the values that um are most authentic to yourself yeah, that's so great. Um, so everyone, I really hope you liked our new layout. Um, mm-hmm. This does not mean that any of our information or experience on the show is compromised just because we are on Zoom or whatever, mm-hmm. um, whatever virtual thing that we're on that, on that day. But, you know, please, like, I don't know what to say because I know <laughs> that we're far away from each other, but... It's the energy that keeps us going forward. It's the guest speakers that take the time out to like come on the show and share their thoughts. Like all of that kind of stuff combined um, is so worth it. And I hope we hope that viewers like um, will just continue to watch us as we move forward, uh, move forward in this pandemic. So thank you, everyone. Um, and oh, yeah, we have social media that we have to talk about. 
Yeah, so please do follow us at The Reality Is Show. And also, um, please do email us at therealityisshow at gmail.com. Awesome. Okay, everyone, or just you and me. Um, <laughs> so, yay, successful for show. Um, yeah. Awesome work. And everyone, you know, stay safe, uh, you know, be kind to one another, and go and get inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh